Reaching your full potential is something that is going to take time. It involves tapping into your strengths, your passions, and your growth in order to achieve your terms of success. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can reach your full potential in Fortnite. To reach your full potential in Fortnite, you're going to need dedication. But to be fair, if you're already interested in watching this video, that shows you already have dedication. To know if you're truly dedicated, you need to be focused on the end goal of reaching your full potential while also believing in yourself. You need to be fully invested in achieving the outcome you want and you need to show devotion to what you want. It's going to be those moments where you feel like giving up or that your goals are unachievable, but you need to work past that in order to achieve your end goal. If you find yourself thinking about Fortnite all the time and how you can improve, you're definitely dedicated. Learning discipline is also going to be a huge part of reaching your full potential. You need to be able to set goals for yourself and determine what you want to achieve either by the end of the season or for the year. Once you have these goals set, you need to work towards them. You need to develop a routine and make yourself a schedule that you will follow. This will make it easier to see quick levels of improvement and also stay on task. Something that I've been doing this year is daily to-do lists. I use this for my day-to-day -day life, which you guys can too, but I recommend using it for Fortnite if you're trying to reach your full potential. The way your to-do list should work is on one day you want to be playing scrims and ranked, but for the next day you want to be VOD reviewing and finding mistakes in your gameplay. This might not be exactly how your daily plan will go, but you need to optimize it to the best of your ability. Don't try putting all the work into one day or you'll get burnt out. For this to actually work, you need to hold yourself accountable. It's so easy to get distracted by little things, then by the end of the night you don't even realize it, but you didn't get anything done. So as you complete everything on your to-do list, make sure to check it off. Now let's talk about making a routine that works for you. If you want to reach your full potential, you need to practice daily. Whether you're just playing the game trying to improve, or just need a warm-up routine, you should be doing some sort of aim training, mechanics training, or peace control training. Practicing daily will allow you to improve at different aspects and also stay up to par on your current skill. When it comes to practicing daily, you need to make sure you're practicing the right things. I talked about this in my previous video, but you want to make sure to focus on more of your weaknesses rather than your strengths. I bet a decent amount of you have pretty good mechanics, but lack on your aim. But then instead of aim training, you guys might be free building and doing build fights which won't help improve your weaknesses. That's why it's important for you guys to optimize your routine to fit your level of gameplay. Optimizing your routine to work on your weaknesses might be boring, but it might be what you need in order to achieve your full potential. The next thing I want to talk about is having a friend group. Having a friend group is going to be important for so many reasons. First being that you guys will be able to hold each other accountable on who's putting in the work and who's not. The second reason being that you guys can almost make it a competition on who's going to place higher in upcoming tournaments. Don't take it to the extreme where you guys are starting arguments, but at the same time, make sure you guys are sort of pushing each other to work towards achieving your goals. At the same time as setting up competitions against your friends, you want to make sure to be helping each other. Let's say if you're struggling with W King and your friend is struggling with Rotates, you guys can try to help each other out and work together even though you aren't teammates. Surrounding yourself with people who have the same goals as you is going to help you improve drastically. For this next topic, I want to talk about playing scrims and tournaments. Playing scrims is going to be the best way for you and your duo to get ready for the upcoming tournaments. In scrims, you guys can build your chemistry as well as learn the new meta and be open to making mistakes without having any consequences at all. It's also good to look over your scrim games and see where you're lacking so you can improve on that and get ready for tournaments. When playing tournaments, you need to give it your all to the end. Something that will always make you play worse is giving up after a couple bad games. Even if you know that you can't qualify at a certain point, it's always worth it to keep giving it your all so you can get used to those high pressure situations and of course go for a better placement. Putting a lot of focus into solos is going to be the best way to improve. Solos will help you to improve individually. If you're struggling on certain aspects of the game like rotates or finding refreshes, solos will help since it's all up to you to fix your mistakes. Solos can also help you to find better teammates. If you're able to get a win in the victory cup or even two wins, it shows that you're a talented player. Having 100 earned on your tracker or even 200 earned might give you the opportunity to prove to a good player that you can perform well. Bot reviewing is also going to be an important aspect of reaching your full potential. Every pro player VOD reviews either right after their tournament or the next day. This is the same thing you should be doing. When you're VOD reviewing, you need to have an open mind and accept when you make a mistake. You also need to dig deeper into why you died in certain situations. Let's say you died on a rotate. It's easy to just say you got unlucky, but what you should do is look back at your previous rotates and figure out what you did wrong. 
Did you go through a congested side of the map where everyone was? Or did you not build off your angles? There are also so many other situations that can go through, but all you need to know is to actually dig deeper into the reason that's causing you to die. The equipment you guys play on will be a huge factor in determining your level of skill. I'm not saying it's impossible to improve on bad equipment, but it definitely makes it harder. It's also not easy to just buy a $150 mouse and a $200 keyboard, but putting some money aside to get some good equipment isn't a bad idea. I personally use the Apex Pro as well as many other pros like Booga and Peterbot, and I also use the Logitech Superlight, which Booga and Peter also use. There's a couple reasons why it's important to get good equipment. First being that having a good keyboard means that it'll probably have good actuation point. If you don't know what that is, it's the distance a key needs to be pressed down before it's registered by the computer. Second reason being that having a mouse that is lighter is better for quicker movement and more accuracy. Studying the top pros is also going to be a big aspect in reaching your full potential. If you watch back certain pros tournaments, you can find some strategies that different pros use in order to play the way they do. For example, you may be able to find a new fighting strategy that you weren't even aware of or even find a new rotation strategy from watching the top duos. The best comparison I can make is that watching over different pro players is like watching the best athlete to improve on your own skills. If you're stuck at a point where your fighting isn't improving, then you need to play solo rank. Solo rank is pretty much the best option for learning different fighting techniques. You also have no teammate to rely on or hold you back, making it the best option to find all your mistakes. Solo ranked will also get you ready for W King and tournaments, but that's only if you're playing the way you should be. When I say you should be playing solo ranked, I don't mean go make a base and hide till the end of the game, or go camp in a bush. I mean try fighting as many people as you can. This is going to be hard if you're someone who is not good at the game at all, but it's needed in order to bring your skill to the next level. Another thing I want to talk about is my improvement map. I made this map specifically for everyone looking to improve. Recently I've been doing weekly updates to the map so you guys can have the best practice and so I can make the best map for my ability. The map offers mechanics, aim, and peace control training. The map has edit courses, peace control tunnels, and over 10 different aim training scenarios. I've also added some new things to the map too. I recently added crosshair placement practice as well as peak training. I do suggest you guys use this map and also let me know what you guys want me to add. I take all advice about the map and have even made updates from what people have suggested in the comments. If you want to use the map, I'll leave the code on the screen and in the description or you could type in Unreal Practice Map. You have to stay dedicated and disciplined to achieve your goals. You need to make your routine, make a competitive friend group, and stay focused on improving in tournaments. Remember to try to fit these tips into your day-to-day -day life to help you reach the end goal and finally reach your full potential. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I have been putting in a lot of effort. Also, make sure to check out one of these two videos if you're interested.